OK, so let's have a look at uh, how we can identify entities from the digital certificates. As part of this, we'll also have a look at how we can examine certificates and some basics around the public key infrastructure. OK, so let's recap where what we've looked at before. So we're going to be looking at providing or proving identity and as part of this, we'll look at how digital certificates are actually used to, to verify an identity of something, and especially how we use the private key to identify something, a person, a service, uh, or even data. So here we have Bob, and we have Alice, and unfortunately we have Eve. So Bob uh, could have a couple of keys, a public key and a private key. The two keys work together. And Alice also can have a couple of keys there. And then we have a digital certificate. OK, so this is Alice's digital certificate. Uh, and as we'll see, uh, the importance of it is the trust. That's Megacorp. If Bob trusts Megacorp, then uh, that uh, that's a certificate that, they, that he trusts and also Eve trusts. So there's Bob's digital certificate. And our focus really is on C and I and A. So for C, we have confidentiality. So confidentiality, and then we have integrity. And the last one is availability. Those are the key focus uh, points for our security. C is message secure. For ad integrity, identity is proven and also that the message is verified. OK, so let's have a look at some public key basics when it comes to proving identity. OK, so let's have Bob again. There's Bob. And we'll just draw Alice. And then here is Bob's public key. He can distribute that one. And there is his private key. OK, so Bob's going to send Alice a message. So the first thing that he does is he takes a little thumbprint, a hash signature of the message, and then he takes his private key and encrypts the hash with his private key. As we'll see, it's this key which actually proves the identity of Bob. And so as part of that, we have Trent and Trent as part of Megacorp and Trent is going to verify the identity of both Bob and Alice. Okay, so here's uh, Alice's digital certificate. But what she has to do is that she can't distribute her public and her private key. So what she does is she exports the certificate which has her public key because Bob is going to send uh, some encrypted message to Alice. So Alice needs to send her public key to Bob so that he can encrypt the message for her. So Alice sends out her public key with the digital certificate and which has been verified by Megacorp. So with this key, Bob can then encrypt the message. So he puts in the hashed signature and he also puts in the message. Okay, so then what he'll do is that uh, he'll send the message over to Alice. Okay, now we'll see how the identity is actually proven from here. Okay, so there's Bob again and there's the keys and here is Bob's digital certificate now it's got both the public and the private key on it okay so we'll just store this is Alice's public and private key and then this is the message that Alice receives so Alice receives the encrypted message with the message that Bob sent and also 
with encrypted hash in there. Okay, so which key will Alice use to be able to decrypt the message? Is it going to be a public key, a private key, or is it going to be one of Bob's keys? So which key do you think Alice is going to use to be able to decrypt it? Well, it's a private key. And she opens up the encrypted message and she can read it now. And now she's got this encrypted hash from there. Now, which key do you think is now going to decrypt that hash? Well, Bob sends over his certificate with his public key. And that's been signed by Megacorp. So Alice will check the certificate to see if everything is, is correct. So the key that she'll use is Bob's public key. Because Bob signed the encrypted hash with his private key. And now Alice now has the MD5 hash of the message. She'll then take the message and she'll produce a hash and then she'll compare the two together and if they're the same she's verified both that Bob was the one who sent the message and also that the message the encrypted message hasn't been tampered with okay so if the same she's proving Bob's identity because only Bob would have the private key if someone gets hold of Bob's private key, then obviously they could impersonate Bob. So that's one of the risks that we have. So now let's we'll have a look at some digital certificates and <coughs> what they look like. Okay, so here's a certificate here. So this is one form of digital certificate. And this is the another one. If we see here one of the certificates has a little key on it and that is the one that has the key pair. We would never distribute uh, a certificate with a key pair on it because someone could get a private key. The second one there is a, very, is a distributable certificate. And then when we're connecting to Websites will often see and check the certificate. So the certificate that we have defines the entity. It proves the, the identity of the entity. It could be a website, it could be data, or it could be a connection. And then on the certificate, when we look at it, we have the public key. In this case, it's a 2048-bit RSA key. So that's the public key. We also get what's called a thumbprint, and the thumbprint is there to make sure that, that no one has changed the certificate. So it's the hash of the overall certificate. And then uh, an extremely important part is the issuer. So we've got to make sure that uh, we trust the issuer of the certificate to have proven the identity of the uh, entity. So that's the issuer. Okay, so now let's look at what's called the public key infrastructure, or PKI. Okay, so here's Alice again. And there's Bob. Okay, so we need some sort of infrastructure for identity to make sure that uh, we can prove the identity from one to the other. So on the internet within PKI, we bring in the concept of Trent. Trent is the trusted root. And the trusted root is the top of the tree when it comes to uh, identity provision. Okay, so this is Trent, and Trent works for Megacorp. So they can uh, authorize uh, certificates. And they'll prove the identity of the entity that they're verifying. So very sign and entrust 
Microsoft uh, Trust and so on are all examples of trusted root authorities. And we'll see that, uh, we see here that VeriSign Trust Network is the issuer. Okay, so that will be uh, installed as a, as a root onto a computer. And that's the highest level trust authority that we can actually have. Okay, so both Bob and Alice trust Trent. Okay, an important part of the trust authority or the trust network is that the trusted route will check the identity of, uh, of the entity involved. Okay, so Trent issues a digital certificate with a public and private key, and then Alice will then distribute her private, her public key to to Bob. So Bob will check the signature and to make sure that the CA has actually signed it and verified it. If he trusts the root uh, and the trusted root has already signed with their private key, then he can verify that the trusted CA has actually signed the certificate. Okay, so he checks that. Okay, so let's look at some certificate types. Okay, so here we have Trent. So Trent will uh, typically issue certificates uh, to uh, to to intermediate trust authorities. And each of the certificates has probably got some focus as to what they're actually uh, signing for. So there might be things like secure email, authentication of servers, code signing, driver authentication, and so on. So there is often a purpose for the certificate and that will be related to, to uh, what the entity is. So the trusted root authorities are the top level authorities and then they can sign for intermediate authorities. So these are the trusted root CEs. And then below that we have intermediate uh, authorities. It's typical here that we'll see a uh, focus on signing certain types of applications such as uh, for device drivers and so on. We can see the one highlighted here as a code signing one and also Windows driver verification. And then at the very bottom of the tree, we have what's called self-signed certificates, which don't really uh, have much credibility because if it's, if there's, there's, there's no uh, entity checking of the uh, certificates. Okay, so these are self-signed and you can see here there is a problem with this one, is that uh, there is no root, CA root for, for the certificate. Okay, and that really was an introduction to how we uh, prove the identity of our entities, how we examine the certificates, and a basic introduction to PKI.